I'm delighted to be joined now by Paul Kimmage. Paul, on the day that Lance Armstrong decides not to contest the USADA charges, they strip him of a seventh Tour de France title. Do you think this brings closure to this story? Yeah, I think it definitely brings closure. Um, I mean, the fact that he's been stripped now of his seven Tour titles and all of his major victories since... Uh, since 1998 is uh, is a pretty damning uh, verdict, and uh, in my view, a suitable a suitable cl- uh, way to end this chapter. And um, yeah, I think it's uh, overall been a, been a been a good day, very good day for the uh, for the sport. It's funny you say that because I think even Travis Tiger at the USADA, the main guy at USADA, says you know this isn't a, it's a sad day for sport that that it, that it kind of comes to this. You don't feel it's a sad day at all. Um, well, I think. Uh, I don't want to suggest that Travis Tiger is, is, isn't uh, as in touch with the reality of modern sport as, as I am, but uh, I think we've known for a long time, certainly in cycling, that drugs have played far too prominent a role in it. Um, Lance Armstrong isn't the first uh, cycling cheat who've been caught and exposed and probably won't be the last. Um, so the sad days the sad days really are the days when the cheating happens, the good days... I'll tell you what the sad days are. I'll tell you what the sad days are on. The sad days are in 1999 during uh, Lance Armstrong's first tour win and a French professional called Christophe Passon who actually has the phys- physical capabilities to win the race and has, had the, and has had those capabilities since he entered the sport whatever, three or four years before that but who has refused totally throughout his career to, to go down the road and use drugs. When he actually decided that the time has come in 1999 during Lance Armstrong's tour reign to stand up and say, I'm sorry, this sport was supposed to have changed a year ago with the Festina scandal. Nothing has changed. We still not. There's still big questions about how this race is being won at the moment. The sad day is when Christophe Basson, who makes that courageous stand and pre- who presents the reality of what the tour is that year, is is himself uh, is vilified by Lance Armstrong number one and is actually effectively run out of the sport and there's no place for him in the sport anymore that's that for me is what a sad day is uh, that there's no recognition um, of Christophe Basson and of people like that who just simply want to get, get a, who, who love the sport who have the who have the ability to compete and to win and to, to achieve their dreams and who are prevented from doing so by um by a governing body, let's let's be honest here, who, who who simply you know fail in their primary duty of implementing the very good rules that they've actually put out there. I'm sure, Paul. People are probably uh, you know reading up the text today and listening to what's been said and listening to Lance's uh, parting shots. I guess one of them is as respected organisations such as UCI and USA Cycling have made clear, USADA lacks jurisdiction to even bring even to bring these charges. What would you say to that argument? Well, it's very well. For me, it's 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 t- uh, that tells you a story in itself. Um, you know that the, U- the UCI, the governing body, have been absolutely jumping over backwards to get hold of this case, so they can actually invert the verdict. Comes investigate it is completely laughable. You know, this is the body that took money from Lance Armstrong. This is the body that changed the rule every time Lance needed a favour. That they changed the rules for him. You know, that they actually take such an active role in the last month in trying to grab hold of this process for me is indicative of, of the real the real problem here um, what they, rules have they changed for him Paul? what rules have they changed for, for Armstrong? yeah well, off the top of my head, I'd say when he came back in, in 2008, uh, well, first and foremost, he tested positive in, 19, in 1999, his very first tour win, for a steroid. He had no right to use that corticosteroid. He, had, he didn't have an exemption for it. He was allowed, he, he was allowed he, they allowed him for his doctor to issue a backdated therapeutic exemption in order for him to get off that positive wrap. The, the Lance Armstrong story should have ended there during that fourth tour in 1999. Tour of France... Uh, sorry, the UCI didn't implement the rules. They gave him a buy on that, and that opened the door then, from, from then, right from 1999, that there was going to be one rule for the cancer martyr and one rule for every other boycotter who was going to be trying to compete there. So it started then, and if you want to take it right through to the other extreme, when he came back in 2009, uh, under their own rules, uh, he was supposed to be in, back in the testing process for six months before he was allowed to ride again. Now, he wanted to go down to Australia to race down there, um, that was what. That was five months after um, that window, or he was sorry, he was a month short of being yeah. in the process, and they wavered that again to allow him to go down to, 
to allow him to go down there and compete in Australia and to earn, I think it was a million dollars of an appearance fee down there. So there you have two extremes from the very first year to, to his comeback of them, you know, not, not doing what they should be doing. So you don't think that, uh, it, it's certainly the, the UCI are sort of um, a holding council for the time being. They, they have issued a statement, all right, but they want to hear more from USADA before they make any sort of recommendations. As far as you're concerned, these Tour de France titles, the prize money, everything is gone from Lance Armstrong. That's, that's not coming back. Well, I don't know about the prize money, how they actually get into the practicalities of taking that money off them or what, the, what, what, the process, uh, what sort of process that entails. Um, but in terms of the, the UCI and this kind of holding pattern they've adopted now, you know, it was more interesting to me that, you know, a month ago in July, uh, when uh, Pat McQuaid was interviewed on Belgian TV at the time of the USADA process was coming up, and he said, look, this is totally, you know, this is nothing, none, none of our business. We're going to sit back and let USADA deal with this. And the very next day, his governing body are issuing letters to USADA challenging their right to do it. Now, you know, what, what was their problem here? You know, that, 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 that's the bit I'm curious about. And the fact then that so much of the evidence, or a large portion of the evidence that USADA had against Armstrong involved the degree to which the governing body was complicit in those tour victories. And I'm talking in particular about the 2001 Tour of Switzerland win when he was supposed to have tested positive uh, and that test again the result of that test was brushed under the car but that's the that, that's the key issue i think that's the key issue that will interest not just journalists like myself but also the government the uh, world anti-doping agency wada i think they're going to take a very active role in in terms of why the uci how this was allowed to happen because this doesn't happen in a vacuum this couldn't happen in a vacuum and um ultimately for me it's not enough it, it has never been about lance armstrong for me, uh, no more than when Michelle Smith uh, was banned in uh, whatever it was, 98. Mm. It, it wasn't about horde. It was about the sport. It's about clean sport. It was about swimming then. It's about cycling now. It's not enough that we strip Lance Armstrong of his titles and then carry on as normal without there being some sort of accountability from the governing body and from the people who are in charge of the sport and have been in charge of the sport for the last 15 years. The, they need to be held to account for this. They need to be, for us to explain, okay, what happened in 1999 with the, with the positive tests? What happened subsequently with you know, accepting donations from them? This is all a matter of record. They took money from them. And I don't know what kind of ethics or morals they have. Yeah, we have, we have discussed this with Pat McQuaid on the, on the program in the past, you know, and he's... How, uh, how past is that, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I'd, say it's a long, I'd say it's a distant past. I think, I think uh, around the time of the comeback, we interviewed him around the time of the yeah. comeback, and I remember bringing up the donations and that kind of thing. And he, he, he said, look, we... We, you know, we're not made of money. We accept donations, and there's there's no, nothing wrong with that. But that's that's essentially their defence. Just on the point of it, uh, Paul, where you say you know it's not about it's it's bigger than Lance. It's not just about Lance. In a way, is a lot of it about Lance Armstrong, though. I mean, you, we played the audio of you confronting him at the press conference. W was there a certain has there been a certain personal thing there where you know you've taken a dislike to this guy for for uh, you know for quite clear reasons, and you wanted a day like this to come ultimately. Uh, well, a dislike to him, absolutely. Um, you know, and this is one of the uh, the disappointments, if you want, of our, what has happened now and the fact that it won't be an arbitration and we won't actually hear the full breadth of the evidence. And people would ask me, well, what is it you dislike about this guy? Because they would quite rightly say, you know, what makes him any difference to Sean Kelly or other people who've doped in the past? You know, and that, that's a fair argument. But if you knew the degree to which Armstrong went about to win these races. If you knew the amount of of lives he has damaged, um, of of misery he's caused to people, then you would have a very different view. I actually uh, I'm in a in a somewhat privileged position to know that to have, to, have, to have spoken to these people who've been on the inside. I spent uh, the 19 uh, the 2008 Tour of France with most about eight of his former teammates. I heard a lot of stuff about him then. You know, I know uh, exactly or have a, a very good idea, I have a very different picture uh, than most people have of this guy. Do I like him? Not at all. Uh, and I'm sorry um, uh, if that's not what a lot of people want to hear. Uh, but the bottom line is this. Uh, when I say it's not about Lance Armstrong, it's not enough for me today to sit here now talking to you to feel that, you know, that's, a, that's grand. The battle has been won. The tr point I'm trying to make is the battle has not been won and will not be won until someone other than Armstrong has held to account for this. Just a last point on Lance, Paul. Uh, you say there that we're not going to hear all these things that you've heard about over the years because essentially he's not contesting these charges now. Is that 
a smart move by Armstrong? Is there a certain sense of... You would have to think it is, and yeah. that's the bottom line here. You know, it's about damage limitation. You know, there are people out there, a lot of them, um, who still want to believe in, in uh, the Armstrong legend, um, who still want to, you know, pull on that yellow, little red, yellow wristband every morning and still think, you know, this is a great man. And, you know, where, where it happened that the, the case went to arbitration and where, to, where, where all of that stuff I've just spoken about to emerge, where the true picture of Lance Armstrong and how he achieved those seven tour wins to be known. I can guarantee you, Owen, tomorrow morning there would be thousands and thousands and thousands of those little yellow wristbands being pulled from wrists and slammed into the bin. Paul, thanks very much for talking to us. Thanks, Owen.